This is quite a famous uh, phenomenon of, in, in Turkey, that there are huge cities. They look like ant farms on an enormous scale that are dug out under the earth. Hundreds and hundreds of rooms that huge efforts was put into digging deep beneath the earth and creating these shelters. Nestled in the heart of Turkey's enchanting Cappadocia region lies Derinkuyu, an ancient underground city that stands as a monument to the ingenuity and resilience of bygone civilizations. Its fascinating origins, complex construction and versatile uses offer a glimpse into a community that sought refuge beneath the Earth's surface, crafting a hidden world of remarkable depth and complexity. And archaeology does not have a good explanation about what they're there for, or why they were built, or when they were built. They're all cut out of stone. You can only date objects that were left in them. You can't say when they were actually made. The story of Derinkuyu begins in the 8th, 7th centuries BCE, with the Phrygians, an Indo-European people renowned for their architectural skills, laying its foundation. What likely started as a modest subterranean enclave was expanded by successive cultures, each adding layers of depth and function to this architectural marvel. Notably, in the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, early Christians seeking sanctuary from Roman persecution carved out additional living quarters, worship spaces and communal areas. They were used by Christians, uh, they were used by Muslims, they were used um, back in uh, 2,000 plus years ago, as homes in some cases. The construction of Derinkuyu was no small feat. It involved the excavation of approximately 2.5 million cubic meters of volcanic rock, known as tuff, which is soft enough to carve but hardens when exposed to air, ensuring stability for the city's expansive underground structures. Derinkuyu's purpose extended far beyond a mere hideout, it was a bastion during invasions and conflicts in the strategically significant region of Cappadocia. What makes sense of those underground cities to me is that they were built as places of refuge that people could go into during an episode of meteor bombardment during the Younger Dryas. Beyond serving as a refuge, it also offered a complete underground living environment with water wells, food storage, livestock pens and even a prison. They're fine, they have air vents, they have water, they're, they're incredibly well thought out. Its intricate layout supported a vibrant community life with residential areas, communal kitchens and places of worship, reflecting a society capable of sophisticated urban planning and social organization. The city's capacity to house up to 20,000 people coupled with its advanced infrastructure, including an extensive ventilation system and a complex water distribution network, speaks volumes about the ancient world's architectural and engineering prowess. I spent hours down there just wandering around and looking at this, this, this amazing place. Of particular note is Derinkuyu's significance to early Christians who found not just a safe haven, but a spiritual sanctuary within its depths. The numerous chapels and churches adorned with religious symbols and bas-reliefs provided a focal point for community and faith underscoring the city's importance as a religious retreat. Derinkuyu, an underground world equivalent to an 18-story building below the Earth's surface. This ancient city, carved deep into the Earth to a depth of around 200 feet, provided a year-round comfortable living environment. Thanks to its cooler and more stable temperatures, it's fascinating to think about how it was designed to house up to 20,000 people, along with their livestock and possessions, showcasing an incredibly organized society, adept at managing life's necessities in such a confined yet complex space. With at least 18 levels, Derinkuyu was more than just a series of tunnels. It was a fully functioning underground metropolis. The city was meticulously organized into residential areas, communal spaces, and even sectors for livestock indicating a society that valued structure and community. The intricate layout ensured that despite being underground, movement within the city was fluid. The city's innovative ventilation system is nothing short of remarkable. Thousands of shafts ensured that fresh air reached the deepest levels, a feat that underscores an advanced understanding of environmental control and airflow. This system was crucial for not only providing fresh air, but also for dispersing smoke from cooking and lighting, maintaining air quality for the large population residing within. But perhaps what stands out most about Derinkuyu are its defensive features. 
Massive stone doors could be rolled across passages to seal off the city, transforming it into a fortress at a moment's notice. The corridors, intentionally narrow, were designed to thwart large groups of invaders, allowing defenders to control movement throughout the city effectively. Moreover, the hidden entrances and exits, some connected to the surface by miles-long tunnels, speak volumes about the strategic planning that went into safeguarding the city. These secret passages allowed for stealthy entrances and exits, crucial for gathering intelligence or making escapes during sieges. Despite the extensive exploration that has peeled back some of its layers, Derinkuyu keeps parts of itself hidden, teasing the imagination with what lies in its uncharted depths. While we've uncovered much, there's still a vast expanse that remains out of reach. Safety concerns and the potential risk of collapse have kept certain sections off limits, sparking a wildfire of speculation and theories about the full scale of this underground labyrinth. Could there be entire levels we've yet to discover, or hidden rooms filled with ancient artifacts waiting to tell their part of Derinkuyu's tale? The lore surrounding Derinkuyu and its sister cities in Cappadocia weaves a rich tapestry of tales that blur the lines between history and legend. Stories of a vast network of tunnels connecting the underground cities suggest a sophisticated system used for trade, communication, or even as escape routes from invaders. The, the two that I visited in the series are, are Derinkuyu and Kaimakli, and these two sites are joined by an eight-kilometer tunnel underground. While some of these tunnels have been confirmed, the full extent of this network fuels the imagination about the capabilities of ancient civilizations. Speculation about Derinkuyu's past ventures into the realms of the extraordinary, with some suggesting it might have been a refugee for extraterrestrial visitors or a remnant of a lost advanced civilization. Although such theories stretch beyond the bounds of established archaeological evidence, they underscore the fascination daring Kuyu incites, reflecting the human penchant for mystery and the unexplained. Daring Kuyu is a hidden gem that tells a tale of human resilience, architectural mastery, and the intricate history of Anatolia. This ancient underground city, a sanctuary carved from the earth, speaks volumes about the lengths to which people will go to protect their beliefs, their culture, and their way of life. Imagine a time between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD when early Christians facing relentless persecution from the Roman Empire sought refuge beneath the Earth's surface. Derinkuyu became their sanctuary, a place where they could practice their faith in secret away from the oppressive gaze of Roman authorities. Within this subterranean haven, they carved out chapels and churches, adorning them with frescoes that depicted scenes from the Bible and Christian iconography creating a space that was not just about survival, but about preserving their spiritual and cultural identity. But Derinkuyu was not an isolated refuge, it was part of a vast network of underground cities in Cappadocia, connected by miles of tunnels. These connections weren't just for escape or hiding, they represented a sophisticated system for trade, communication and strategic movement, highlighting an advanced level of social organization and urban planning in ancient Cappadocia. This network of cities underlines the region's significance as a cultural and economic hub, showcasing the ingenuity of its people in creating a cohesive and cooperative community. The modern rediscovery of Derinkuyu is as fascinating as its history. In 1963, a local stumbled upon a mysterious room behind a wall in his home, unveiling the entrance to this ancient city. This discovery captured the imagination of historians, archaeologists and the wider public, leading to the exploration of the city and its eventual opening to tourists. Today, Derinkuyu is not just an archaeological site, it's a major tourist attraction that draws people from all over the world eager to explore its ancient passageways, chapels and the incredible engineering behind its construction. Derinkuyu's significance has been recognized on a global scale, as it, along with other sites in the Cappadocia region, has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This honor speaks to its value to humanity, preserving its history and architecture for future generations. The city stands as a symbol of what humans are capable of achieving when faced with existential threats, creating safe havens of remarkable complexity and beauty. Beyond its historical and architectural value, 
Derinkuyu serves as an educational resource, offering insights into ancient construction techniques, community living, and survival strategies. It continues to inspire and educate, reminding us of the depths of human ingenuity and the enduring spirit of communities that have faced adversity throughout history.